Okay, first things first. I was asked to read this when I first got up here. Pursuant to the town warrant, a copy of which has been mailed to every household, I will dispense with reading the warrant if there are no objections. There are extra copies of the warrant at the register's table. That's our first item of business. Next item of business. Oh, the young people in the corner here who are filming and recording this have asked that I ask for two, but at least one volunteer to move a microphone around if people want to speak. And I, whoop, I see a hand in the back. So we have a volunteer. Thank you very much. Next. Next, I'm going to read a special statement for the special town meeting from the select board chair, John O'Rourke, who could not be here tonight, said, my sincerest apologies for not being here tonight. After the select board set the date for the special town meeting, the partners at my company set a date for the year-end meetings for the same day and evening at our headquarters in New York City. Due to my role in the company, my attendance at the year-end meeting is required to report on our progress in New England over the past year and our marketing strategies and business development plans for two, uh, 2020 and beyond. This is a very important special town meeting. The main event is obviously the vote for the Highway Department Maintenance Facility tonight, followed by the ballot vote on Thursday, December 12th for the debit exclusion, the debt exclusion to finance the maintenance facility. He has other things to say which will be conveyed by the other selectmen later and in the end he says thank you for being here tonight again my apologies for not being here. Mm -hmm. We'll be proceeding tonight, I would expect, starting with Article 1. So I'm going to read each of the motions. Article 1, I move that the town amend the schedule of town clerk fees as printed in Article 1 of the warrant. So if, if you have the warrant, you can see all of those fees listed. I won't read them all. We need a second. And we're looking for a second. So this article was submitted by the town clerk, um, and the Board of Selectmen recommendation was three to nothing. I'll second this. Your motion. Do we have an explanation? Do we have an explanation? Microphone, uh, microphone, microphone, microphone. Um, the town clerk's fees have not increased since 1991, and the cost of supplies. Mic on. Okay, yeah, yeah now it is. Okay. Right to your mouth. Yep. Yeah. As I said, the town clerk's fees have not been increased since 1991, but the cost for supplies, the special paper for printing certifi you know, certificates and licenses has increased. So we just need to bring the cost up a little bit on the other side to cover the increased expenses for me. Anything else? Okay, any other questions? How about discussion? Do I have a motion? Yeah. The, the, the motion has the been motion's made and seconded. Made and seconded. Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Article 2. I move that the town amend the schedule of dog license fees as printed in Article 2 of the warrant. So again, refer to the warrant. Lauren. 
So the select board recommended three to nothing. The select board recommended it three to nothing, and it was submitted by the town clerk. Any explanation needed? Uh, Hope Crowley is just wondering uh, why we're raising the dog fee license. Microphone. 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 <laughs> the same reason as the other town clerk's fees, the increased cost of the tags and the licenses and maintaining the system. But, I mean, they, have they gone up just in the few months that you've been in office? I mean, presumably they rose before this time. They raise incrementally every year, but now it's getting to the point where it, we're not even going to break even anymore. It's going to be a loss in what we have to spend to purchase the tags and the licenses and to what we get from the people who actually license their dogs. Any more discussion? Would you like to vote? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Article 3. I move that the town amend the bylaws relating to dogs as printed in Article 3 of your warrant. And you will see the complicated language, the modification in Article 3. So it was submitted by the town clerk. It was recommended by the Board of Selectmen two to one. Second. Okay. Do we need an explanation? Um, yeah, that would be me, Phil Cantor, River Street. Um, uh, for, I, I violate this ordinance on a daily basis, as is. Uh, the, and, you know, I, I can't in good... In, you know, the, I, I got a Frisbee dog and a stick-chasing dog and, I lo and a, a dog that's a swimming fool, and doing all those things is against the law. Phil, um, if, if I may... Your dogs do not need to be leashed on your own property or the right. property of anybody else or if they are under your control. So this is basically... And exactly. Well... <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, I, when, when this, the, the, this ordinance is a big city. Originally, it's, this makes perfect sense in big cities. It makes... Um, it doesn't even the, the biggest no-no with dogs in town is leaving presents in other people's lawns, and this doesn't cover that at all. The, uh, unfortunately for uh, us, uh, this is a state law, and we've been be, we have always been able to fine for the state laws, and rewording this will put it so the fines are on our bylaw, which is, our bylaw level, which is a lot lower. If you were to be fined, in, I believe the bylaw non-criminal is twenty-five dollars, fifty dollars, and a hundred. It's, it's fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty. Okay, fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty. Whereas the state calls for fines that are a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred. Yeah. So this, I mean, if I, you know, if you were to be fined this way, the fines would be a lot lower. So if I'm understanding this right, and I don't have a problem with this, someone owns a lot of acreage. You decide to take your dogs for a walk off leave. It's my property. I can go to the constable or the police officer and say, hey, she was trespassing, or her dogs were uh, not trespassing because there are no trespassing signs posted, but these dogs were off lead. Isn't that kind of touchy? You're trying to follow state rule. I'm basically trying to make it more consistent with the wording of the state law. It, it isn't changing the bylaw in any way, shape, or form. It's making it a wording more 
Um, the only thing I see different, and yes, I understand you're trying to bring it up to the state law, and I don't have a problem with that, is I would say the greater percentage of people in Conway weren't even aware of this law, and now they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And there can be issues. You know I'm a landowner, and I do have a lot of dog issues, but I just overlook it. Which most people do. And but now that a lot of people are aware of this, I'm just hoping it doesn't sort of backfire and bite us. Hopefully so. not. I mean, unfortunately, it always has been a bylaw, and I'm not adding it to it. No, I understand that. But I'm hoping we understand when we vote mm -hmm. that now that people go, oh, my God, this dog just stepped foot on my property, wasn't leashed. I don't like this person, so now I can go after him because of his dog, that we're not opening a whole can of worms by voting this in. Right. And, and you know, it's not like I plan on running around with a citation book and finding everybody. No, ma'am. <laughs> Malcolm? We need a microphone, Malcolm. It's coming. Yeah, I'm Malcolm Coase from Truce Hill. Uh, I don't mind a dog out in the country running around, but by God, when they start trenching through my garden, they better be on a leash or they're going to be a dead dog. <laughs> Thank you. Joe? <coughs> Sometimes these uh, bylaw changes have a uh, key that says things that are underlined are being added or deleted. Uh, I think in this case, underline means it's added, and a strike through means it's being taken out. So the, the thing about the leash, for instance, that's been there forever. That We're not changing right. the eight foot leash. So I just wanted to clarify, there seems maybe some confusion here. The bylaws have been on the books for years. Uh, I know as a selectman, we had to deal with it in the state forest. In the state forest, the state laws apply, and you can be off leash in the state forest. At least back then, you used to. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, someone. Uh, Alex Caswell, Reeds Ridge Road. I'd like to make a motion to amend this to remove the words chain or. Uh, so it would read, any dog within the town of Conway shall be restrained by a leash not exceeding eight feet in length. I don't think we need to chain our dogs up in Conway. That makes sense. Yes, that's the wording that was previously in our law. So second that motion then. We have a motion and a second to amend this motion by removing chain from the verbiage. Any discussion on that? So we're now, we're not talking about the amendment, not the motion. Yes, dear. Alice Herman, Main Poland Road. I have a, a run on my property, and it has a chain attached to the run. And I'm not going to change that to something. I mean, I don't feel that I should have to change the chain on my run. To mm -hmm. Interesting. Or something else. I mean, Jane could be the I don't think it's yeah. yeah. Chain. Yeah. What is the difference, run. actually? I mean, so I, I'm just questioning it. That's all. Behind you. I don't need that. <laughs> you, you, do, you do for the TV cameras. I, I have a leash that's a chain. What's a leash? <laughs> is it, can you define what it's made out of? It can be made out of anything. Mine happens to be made out of a chain. It, it doesn't affect the dog in any way, shape, or form. It's not around its neck. It's just hooked to its collar. I don't, I don't see. I think this is ridiculous. Any more comments on the proposed amendment to the motion? Would you like to vote? Yeah. Yes. We're voting on the proposed amendment to strike the word chain. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, the amendment's been defeated. Any more comment on the motion? Yes, ma'am. 
I am just wondering if are there incidents? Have dogs been a problem in this town, or is this just us trying to comply with the state when there has been no problems and we're just letting the cart instead of the horse pull this forward? Again, it has it has always been a bylaw, so we have always complied with the state, but we have had in the past year two biting incidences that have led to um, treatment in a hospital. Hi, my name's Gail. I live on Hoosick Road. I have a problem with dogs running loose. You don't, when your dog's running loose out of your yard, you don't know what it's doing. It could be killing chickens, it could be attacking people. I've had chickens killed in my yard by other people's dogs. And my son was almost killed by a dog when he was three. He's 50, but he was three when it happened. And I've had problems with people on my street with their dogs in my yard. So when I go out with my dogs in my yard, it's a problem. So there's a leash law for a reason, and people shouldn't be letting their dogs run loose. Sorry. Any more discussion on Article 3? We're going to move the question then. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. All in favor? We, we moved the question. So let's move the article. All in favor of Aye. Article 3? Opposed? <laughs> Article 4. I move. Does the town adopt Massachusetts General Law Chapter, chapter 59, Section 2AA, and change the effective date of assessment from January 1 to July 1, beginning July 1, 2020. Now this article was submitted by the Board of Assessors and it was recommended by the Select Board 3 to 0. Uh, does the Finance Committee have a recommendation? The Finance Committee had no recommendation. Okay. Okay, can we have an explanation? Please. Uh, in the past, the effective value, date of valuation of anyone's property is as of January 1. Well, that's fine, but if uh, a property, you know, it's a lo lousy time of the year to be getting around, quite frankly, to be looking at everyone's property. So there is on the books a bylaw that allows us to change that effective date for inspections and all, carry the value forward to June 30th, which is the end of the fiscal year, and it also is much e more easily explained. If we come and look at your property on in June, then what we're looking at then is what will be on that September's bill just a couple of months later. Instead of us coming now in December and you not seeing any change in your bill until next September, 10 months later. So it makes it a little simpler to, to explain and it uh, gives us a nice room to pick up some better weather rather than slogging into the heaps of snow these days. That's all it is. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Move the question. You get, is that your second, sir? Okay. Any, any discussion? Any chance? Let's vote then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Article 5. I move that the town adopt Massachusetts General Law Chapter 114, Section 27 to authorize the Board of Selectmen to appoint a board of cemetery commissioners for the town of Conway. Now this was uh, submitted by the town administrator 
and the select board recommended it 3-0. Explanation. So the reason that we did this was because right now we don't have a cemetery commission, so the select board has been acting as the de facto cemetery commission. And that worked as long as there was nothing for the select board to do. <laughs> but <coughs> lately, there have been a number of people that have come and want to know where there are burial spots in Conway. And we really don't know. <laughs> I, I hate to admit it, but we have very little historical data of w what cemeteries have openings and where we could bury somebody. We do have people in town who are interested in working on cemeteries, and it just feels like the right thing to do is to reform a dedicated, full-time, real cemetery commission with town volunteers. So that's why we put it on the warrant. Do I have a second on this motion? Uh, Ronnie Hawks? Microphone, microphone. Ron Hawks, Academy Hill. Uh, I just have a question. Did that in just the outlying cemeteries or all the cemeteries? Because there is two cemeteries. So it's not going to include uh, Pine Grove or Howland. Okay. Because those are private property. Yeah. Malcolm Course. Is this a paid, is this a paid uh, position or is this a volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, highly paid is all the rest of them. It's a volunteer. <laughs> Any other discussion? Let's vote. All in favor of Article 5? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Article 6. I move that the town adopt Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48, Section 42, establishing the position of fire chief as a strong chief. Second. Good. There's a second on the motion. Uh, I'd like to introduce Bob Baker to all of you right now. He's going to explain this, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Bob Baker, the fire chief. <clears throat> I presented this to the board of selectmen and got their unanimous approval on it because back when I was hired in 1980, the towns didn't have a lot of uh, official wording or things like that. And when I was hired, they told me I was hired as a strong chief act, under the strong chief act. And come to find out, since we now have a town administrator, they investigated it down in the town. Of the county has never voted for it. So all those years, I was acting as a strong chief up until about the last six years when I was told I wasn't. So it's time that I think that we get it clarified and uh, put this item to rest. To go along with that, the town of Conway Board of Selectmen and the town of Asheville Board of Selectmen the Asheville Fire Department and the Town of Conway Fire Department are looking at a possible some sort of merge because the Town of Asheville has very, very limited firefighters. A scary low number. And we have a real decent number of firefighters. As a matter of fact, on the roster we have 27. So, in, the car, in the, their hopes of the selectmen who discussed it, in future years, when the Asheville Fire Chief retires and I retire from Conway, they're hoping that po a good possibility might come that both towns will have one fire chief to, to take control of both towns. That way there would save the towns money, in a way. So Asheville already has a strong chief act in place. And the Asheville Fire Chief recommended me, to me that I, we, we get this, try to get this clarified in our town so in the future, if this merger ever does take place, that it will be more simplified for both boards of selectmen to deal with somebody on the Strong Chief Act. 
What the Strong Chief Act does is the same thing as a regular fire chief, except the Strong Chief has total control of his department. He appoints his officers, his deputy chiefs, and all his firefighters. And the Weak Chief Act is all handled by the Board of Selectmen in the towns. And this was put into existence years ago because they had problems across the state in a few towns where a new member of the Board of Selectmen or two members might come on board, and they may not like somebody in the fire department, whether it be an officer or a firefighter. And they could remove that person or do whatever they want to them and cause a whole ruckus in the fire departments, and the fire departments were getting upset about it, and some of them were quitting. As a matter of fact, just a couple years ago, you saw there was a fire department just west of us here that they all resigned at once. Okay? So I, that was one of the main reasons why the Strong Chief Act was, was put into existence by the state legislators, to try to prevent things like that. So um, I guess that... Uh, I am looking for your recommended vote on this, just to clarify the situation. I do understand that if it's voted tonight, that the town is going to come back to you in May of next year and change the town bylaws a little bit. Because right now the town bylaws said that the Board of Selectmen have to, pro, uh, have to appoint every member of every committee in the town. Am I correct on that? So that would have to be changed. But if it's a vote tonight, it will just be the start of it. You'll see another article come out in May of next year to finalize it. So, thank you. Sir. Here, get him a mic. He's coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Barton, chair of the personnel committee here in town. I'm from Upper Baptist Hill Road. But we had a meeting on December 4th at which Bob Robert was our principal uh, person. And it was really to talk about something a little different about the fire department. But of necessity, this question came up about a uh, super chief versus chief. And as a personnel committee, the fact is that it does fall somewhere within our purview to make comment about what is proposed. And it's not that we are standing against Bob. The fact is that Bob has stated the case very clearly. And really, with reference, I have indeed the state's picture of that uh, super chief in, as written. So he has stated it very clearly. It's a strong position. It's not an absolute position because the select board still has a role in how he conducts his affairs. But the problem for the personnel committee was that our bylaw essentially makes all hiring and firing that, uh, that the selectmen's options. And so we would have to change a bylaw that is significant from the fact that it's been in existence for a long, long time to make this act, uh, the super chief, in fact, a reality. And our thought was rather than have that motion made tonight and accepted where you could find yourself in a position of actually Healy's office saying it doesn't work because your, your bylaws regarding the selectmen give them full authority. And here the chief would have authority to hire and fire his own people. What we suggest is we table this until we, the personnel committee and the selectmen, can work through the matter of what bylaw would take place have to be changed, not only from the point of view of the selectmen, but also the personnel handbook and the personnel policies connected with, with salaried employees. So I would make a motion that we table this and give the personnel committee and the selectmen to work this through. Sure. Phil? Is there a second? Um, so, th t just just a, a different point of clarification. So the the you hear the word strong chief, super chief. Those words aren't in the law itself. Yes, they, are. they are well, no, um, no. The the uh, the 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 thing about it is that 
the the principal difference is the difference between an at will employee and an employee that can only be terminated for cause. And um, so that's just something you know. Right now, the chief like ever, is an at will employee according to the town, um, and that this. If this particular provision is enacted, the chief would become a for cause, uh, an employee that can only be terminated for cause. And you might think that he's been appointed every year for 30 years, for 38 years, um, as an at will employee. Maybe, maybe he might have earned at some point the right to be a for, terminated for cause, for cause. But that's, um, but th that that's that's the key distinction as I see it in what is being proposed at will versus for cause. So Bob came and presented this article to our board. And if there's any, any group in Conway we support, it's the firemen. And we supported it and voted three to zero that we would go along with Bob's idea. But we also submitted the article to our town council. And our town council came back to us and said, because this is in violation of our town bylaws, our town council recommended that at this meeting we table it and that we decide what we want to do about changing our bylaws before we try to adopt um, this motion, which would be in violation of the bylaws. So we, we did not change our recommendation away from three to nothing, but I suspect if we had known about the town council's recommendation at the time that we made our recommendation and printed the bylaws, that we would not have made it three to nothing. Kenny Womatt. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I was... I. We have a motion to table on the floor already. We just got a second. But we also have uh, a motion and a second to vote on the actual article. So I would say we're going to take the motion. Joe? And precedence is on the table. I believe precedence is voting on the table. So we're going to vote on the table motion. Is there any more discussion on the table motion? Okay, let's vote on the table motion then. All in favor of tabling? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Oh. It's moved. So, Article, Article 6 is tabled. Article 7. I move that the town appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund as recommended by the Community Preservation Committee as set forth in Article 7 of the warrant, Section A, to be subject to Conservation Commission review. So this, this article was... Uh, put forward by the Community Preservation Committee, and the selectmen recommended it three to nothing. Finance Committee? Finance Committee, we had uh, no votes in favor, one no vote, and three abstention votes. Thank you. Do we have a second? Opening, I'm opening discussion. How about an explanation first? Malcolm Kors, Truce Road. Being uh, in the position I really didn't want, which is chairman of the CPA, not only am I the oldest member in birthdays, but I'm also the oldest member since it was first Founded, but at any rate, with that aside, uh, I'm a little concerned about a lot of things in town. And one is when you look up at the cupola on the town hall, it looks like we're a dump. 
And it bothers me that we're building more buildings and we're not taking care of the ones we have. So that's, this was my proposal. Was to, uh, and I have been, I have contacted three steeplejacks and got some, some quotes from them. Uh, and we, the quotes are a little less than the 45,000. What's that? The, there's two parts to it. Yeah. He's talking, that, he's talking about part, part B. Don't get, don't get excited. <laughs> might have to <clears throat> got my train of thought all mixed up. <laughs> I contacted one steeplejacks of America, and they provided me with 15 different steeplejacks, and they're out of Ohio, and they would come and do it for a price which wasn't all that bad. But out of those 15, I only found two that were still in business. The rest mm. of them have resolved. But that's where we're at with that. that, that, that it's not, they're not gonna, the ones I've contacted are not requesting of taking it down and doing it on the ground. They'll do it right up there where it's at. And 45,000 is more than what any of the quotes I had, but I'm hoping that we'll have enough money left so I can incorporate painting the peak of the town hall and hopefully take care of the pillows going in the front door so I don't look like we got a dump for a town hall. I was hoping to have all this work done before our 250th celebration, but it didn't get done. The other part, I'm sure Sue would like to speak on it, but I'll, I'll speak on it, is the uh, pollinator field. People say, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, what's ridiculous is that the bees are leaving. And if we don't make provisions for them to feed, we won't be eating. And that's the God's honest truth. Because there's not a whole lot of fields anymore that are cultivated like it used to be with the farmers for the bees to get their pollen and, and, and to pollinate other, other things. So that's... That's what I have any questions, but I'm more glad to answer them. Sue, would you like to say anything about the pollinator part? So here we are today. Is this broadcasting? Yeah, oh, oh, right okay. <laughs> um, here we are in the new normal with... Uh, strange weather and lots of change and um, one of the things that's happened is that nationally uh, European honeybees have suffered in this last year 50% mortality. Those are the, the bees that are kept in hives by, by, by beekeepers. Uh, wild bees in our region uh, estimate is that they had a 25 to 45% uh, decline in this last year. Um, as for bumblebees, uh, and they're very efficient pollinators, as I, I think you all know. Uh, they've got these hairy legs that do carry the pollen from plant to plant. Uh, we have had, until recently, 11 species native to our region. Uh, now, all are gone except for seven species. That's a 36% that's a uh, decline. So how much of our food uh, depends on pollinators? About a third. Uh, anyway, this project and others like it, I think, are a good beginning at trying to protect ourselves going forward and our food sources. Um, and uh, not, not, la not last and not least, we have a chance to create some beauty and have some fun putting it in. <laughs> it's a, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a 0.57 acres on the Audubon land, and they are cooperating with us and allowing us to um, put a pollinator field there. It's a three-year project. First, you have to put down plastic 
back and and get rid of the 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 plants that are there um, then you begin prepar preparing the soil and then you and, and you plant them in and um, yeah hi My hope is it's the first but not the last. And we actually have three or four landowners who have approached us and said they would like to do the same on their, on their lands. So it's a small thing, uh, small protection, I think, to us all, and, uh, uh, but it's a good beginning. I think one reason the group picked the field where they did because it's where people see it more than they would down the rose field. People go by that area twice a day at least, and I think that's the reason for it. However, I'd like to give you a little rundown on the CPA funds if you're th wondering if there's enough money there to cover it. Right now, the total fund of CPA is $1,033,525. So anybody that says, get rid of the CPA because, you know, we're paying too much tax. Well, I don't know. I guess people can't figure, but, you know, I pay around $5,000 in taxes. And what little bit goes to CPA, I feel is well worth it. And uh, with that parting shot, I'll leave it. Thank you, Malcolm. GW. Yeah, I know. I got it. That's why I took it. <laughs> Listen, I, I've been a member of Mass Audubon for over 50 years. Hate to admit that age, but uh, and I, my my wife was the second director of uh, second chair of the Community Preservation Act, and I was an agricultural consultant for 25 years. I know a lot about bees. I'm in favor of Audubon. I think this is a boondoggle. I've worked on on multi-acre pollination projects that cost half of what this is. Um, I think this thing is very badly planned. They say, oh, we can use this cloth again. Well, geez, if this guy's done all of these other projects, why can't we get some used cloth? Or if he doesn't have any used cloth, why can't we get this one at a third the price because he's going to sell it two more times? And we're doing this all on a piece of property where zero taxes are paid. They pay nothing into this, into this fund. They have millions and millions of dollars in assets. They have, Audubon has so much more money than any of us can imagine. And yet, we're doing a project on their land. Let them who do their own project. If we're going to do something with pollinators, let's do it locally on some land that taxes are paid on. There's plenty of places in town where people can see. Frankly, I don't think this one's all that visible. Uh, on a corner behind some shrubs. I'm not opposed to pollinator meadows. They're important. I'm not opposed to Audubon. I'm not opposed to the Community Preservation Act. I just think that this thing, start to back, is just a plain bad idea. Any other discussion? Article 7. Hi, Joe Zadroga. I'd like prefer sitting down like Malcolm. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, my question is, several years ago, I thought we had voted for the cupola to be re uh, repaired or restored or painted or something. And I wish I could tell you what year it was. But then I kept looking at the town hall and nothing was done. You know? And then just recently I asked what happened to the cupola. And he said, well, the money has been put back into the general fund. Can someone explain exactly why we vote for something that we wanted and then nothing gets done and now the money is... We have to vote again. It just doesn't seem to be clear to me. Mary Irwin, Baptist Hill. Um, I think both of these projects fit the purpose of the CPA perfectly well. We're sitting on a lot of money in the CPA. 
I don't think it's really relevant that there's no tax being paid on this land. We have the money. Um, we could vote not to create the pollinator field and wait another year or two to persuade Audubon or find other places. I don't know why we're sitting on all this money and we just have two small projects. But we just don't go out and do them. So. Last word. I was on the Star Commission when this issue came up, and it was actually Bob Baker who indicated that there is lead paint on that cupola, and that the cost of what it thought would be to repair that, because it is in the National Historic District, and it is an historic building, just under the wire, but it is, uh, would have been much more than what was thought the case, because these men would have to come suited, they'd have a special truck, they would have everything, it would be much more. Last word. <laughs> the last word this time. Hi, I'm Janet Shays, and I had some questions about the pollinator project. I certainly agree with many of you here that we want to encourage our native native bees. But this particular project, I, I haven't been able to get much information. And, and uh, $12,000 is maybe not a huge sum. However, it's our money. And, uh, and I think it all should be spent wisely. We did ask and, and got some details from Sue Bridge Apparently, these uh, she did not. One question is: Is this going to go so the twelve thousand will go to your new tax exempt organizations, Sue, and that would go be transferred? No, it would go where? Which is and the friends of Conway is. Please explain. Microphone. Yes, uh, this is a group of citizens of, of our town, and um, the money, um, by the way, Murphy, I, I don't know where your sense of, of, of the, the budget comes from. Other, I mean, I submitted you to, uh, both of you have, of you have seen the y budget. Yes, we saw your 12. Yes. And, and, by, and by the way, uh, that that is a very reasonable budget. Okay, I, I, and, then and I, have some, I have some questions on exactly how it's going to be spent. And so the idea, th I, I just would like to say that Tom Sullivan, who is the pollinator expert who has put in pollinator gardens throughout Greenfield, uh, is an honest man, and I wouldn't use the word bo boondoggle about anything he does. Uh, he's been, wor he's put in, Countless gardens around. The, That's fine. The town. Who He's, exactly is doing the labor, and where are those? Are, is is that being paid? Uh, in the proposal that I looked at, fifteen hundred dollars goes to Tom Sullivan for over three cons years consulting and planning and so forth. And you're going to borrow somebody's tractor uh, after you've smothered all the weeds and whatever else you're doing. Who's doing the labor? We have volunteers. I see. And who's on the board of the Friends of Conway? We aren't incorporated yet. Oh, you're not? I, but I thought you're tax exempt? No. No? I mean, you're mixing up oh. my own home. I see. And my work of 12 years, I which see. is under an incorporation of 501c3. I the see. Friends of Conway is just a. We may incorporate at some point, but for now, it's just a group of. And, and so your so that group is going to receive the twelve thousand dollars. Yes. And then pay it out. Yes. The money would be a, would be available to pay the bills from this project. It would not go to the Friends of Conway specifically. Pardon? You 
Well, it's, you know, yep. if, if you... It, the bills as they came in would be presented to the town to be paid through this funding. So then, that, then all those purchases have to follow town purchasing rules. All those payments would, would follow whatever had to go out to bid would. There are very few that uh, would have to come, would come into that category. Okay, I'm just wondering yep. if, you know, where, yep. where the money is going to sit and who's earning interest on it for, and how it's going to be administered so yep. for one, you know, for one thing. Let's move the question. We have a motion and a second to move the question. Let's vote on that motion to move the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. <laughs> I need to say something to Janet that she's completely wrong on. Malcolm, <laughs> let, let's vote on this. Please. No, they're both included in Article 7. Could we do it? Is it possible? No. So. Too late. Too late. We, we moved to a vote. Okay. We got to that point. We had to move the question. We had a second. We voted on that. That means. We're going to move the qu we're going to vote on Article Seven. It means we're at that point. Yo. Yes, sir. I understand that, but if you want that to occur at this point, you have to defeat this. And then make a motion. To and then make a motion to revisit it. So if it gets defeated, we because we we. Uh, does not say that. I know it says they're separate appropriations, but the the spirit of the article does appear to. So part A is, is under the review of the conservation. It's not our job. Only part A is reviewed. Needs to be approved by the conservation commission. Part B doesn't. Part B was presented first by Malcolm Kors. Joe Strigowski. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to untable the article so we can decide. I think they should be voted separately. <laughs> it's do we have to move it or do we? I, as 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 far as I can figure out, with my parliamentary cheat sheet, <laughs> we've come to the point where we have an article and a second. We move the question that was voted. That means the next thing we're going to act on before we act on anything else is Article Seven. Okay, so we're voting on Article Seven right now. A and B, Article 7. And, and then is the procedure that if Article 7 is not uh, defeated. defeated, someone could ask to reconsider it? Or can something that's been defeated get reconsidered? The, the ask for reconsideration, I believe, has to come from somebody who voted to defeat it, against it. Truly. So we are going to vote on Article 7 now. Okay? All in favor of Article 7? Aye. Opposed? Aye. We're going to have to count. I need a couple of counters. One for one side, one for the other. Oh, we can do cards, but I still need counters. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe how hard these cops here. Yeah. I thought she was going to cast and she just walked out. Well, why did you say? Who's getting counters? Are you getting counters? It should have been accepted. 
I think she, I think she's grabbing people out there to stop. It should have been at the beginning, amendments for two separate orders. Okay, please. You're on a finance committee, so that means you can count. Sure. Okay. All in favor of Article 7, hold your cars up. Keep them up until I tell you you can put them down. Against, you can put your cards down if you're for. Against, please, hold your cards up. Okay, Article 7 carries 63 for, 25 against. Article 8. I move that the town transfer $5,200 from free cash. To the general fund to increase the hours of the assistant to the town administrator. Now this article was uh, submitted by uh, turn the page. The town administrator and uh, was recommended by the select board two to one. Finance committee? Finance committee voted unanimously four oh in favor of the article as presented. Explanation. Uh, actually, I, I need to be recognized as a non-resident to speak. Dana? A vote would be helpful. <laughs> and then I can present it. I think like most of you in here, uh, we have no idea why these uh, Article 8 and 9 are being asked for might be completely valid, but we have no way of knowing, and we have to kind of depend on our select board to act just on these issues. So I would like Bob to give us your opinion why you were in favor of it and why you are opposed to it. Thank you. So Tom was going to speak to this article, but he needs to be rec recognized by the by a vote of the town. He's There's a motion and second to recognize Tom. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Opposed? I was going to say. Uh, thank you. Um, there are two. They're going to they're going to speak. I promise. Uh, there are uh, two. This is for Article Eight. There are two main areas this would fund. Uh, one is increased communications ability. Uh, I understand that there is no need uh, for the town to produce a newsletter, as some had feared, but we need more uh, attention uh, to the website, considerably more attention, and uh, some attention also paid to social media. Uh, the other is increased work in human resources. Legal requirements are growing and the town needs someone who can maintain the systems we have and improve on them as necessary. Uh, I see 
this both as necessary in itself so that town employees are afforded the attention they deserve and as a means to reduce the town's liability in this area. I will note that there is a hidden cost to this, which is substantial. Increasing the assistance hours would bring the job over 20 hours a week, which means it would be a benefited position, eligible for health insurance. Although there is sufficient money in this year's budget to cover this, there would have to be an increase in the employee benefits budget next year of about $12,000 to cover the most expensive health care option as we budget conservatively. Nonetheless, I believe that we need this additional work. So I, I'm willing to a, a address your request. Uh, I watch how hard Tom and Lisa work in their office and how important their work is. And Lisa's in there long hours and she's critical to running the office. And I, I think that she has more than enough to do to justify more hours. So I supported it. <clears throat> so I voted no to this. I, I actually think it's not really even appropriate for us to talk about employee performance because as you know, the select board does not do employee evaluations. So just like it's not okay, it's, it's not okay to trash your employees for when, when you don't have a factual basis like a, a, an employee value. It's not okay to praise them because that's just the opposite side of the same coin. So the, the uh, uh, I, I oppose this for a whole bunch of different reasons, but the, the, uh, the, the, ben the cost of the benefits, the, the fact that right now human resources is um, the province of, is the responsibility of our town administrator. So this is easing his workload, if you want to characterize it like that. But I have never personally heard him say that he cannot, that he's so busy that he cannot attend to his current duties. Um, so, uh, you know, to, to me, when you're talking about growing the size of town government, once you, once you open that up, it's, it's on your budget. You got a, you got a benefited employee from now on. And you, that's, that's the, that's the, the, you should consider that as a tax increase. Um, and so if, if there was a coherent, articulate, specific need um, that could be addressed, I would be open to it. But this nebulous human resources, uh, stuff, um, no thanks. And the other part of it is that th the budget, when you look at the budget of the department of the town administrator, um, in the six or seven years since before we hired, we hired the current town administrator, this department's budget has more than doubled and it, it, it increased. And a lot of that's because of the difference in pay, the way we now manage our town government. It's not a, a, a criticism of him, you know, but, but the, the, uh, um, <clears throat> we, <laughs> When, when you then fund a position within that department outside of the normal budget process, it doesn't even show up on, um, in, in that percentage increase for the next year. It would show up as a line item that's been approved by town meeting. So because just on basic good budgetary practices, all employees from every department should be compensated through the department's regular budget and not in special town meeting articles, in my opinion. So that's just part of it, but that's enough. Any other discussion? Are we ready to vote on Article 8? Oh, Tommy, Tom Pleasant. Tom Pleasant, <coughs> excuse me, Tom Pleasant, Matthews Road. When is, um, we're under contract with, with um, Tom Hutchison now. He's under, when's your contract up with the town? My contract is up June 30th of this year of 2020, this 2020. fiscal year. So one more, one more, one more, oh, actually next June. No, this coming this June. This coming June, okay. All right, and then in this position, this adding this $5,200, will this take any work away from you? In your current, like, like Phil said, Phil said you, you're responsible for human resources. Are you gonna take some of that work away and, and give it to Lisa? It's always a balancing act deciding what my priorities are because they're r running a town government is very complex human resources is an area which is very specialized 
there's, there's a lot of knowledge. There are a lot of requirements. And uh, I have not so far led the town into a lawsuit. Uh, but I do recognize that it is, uh, I, I believe it's the area of highest liability for the town if something were to go awry, if we were to um, not do something we were supposed to do. And I try my hardest to stay on top of everything that needs to be done, but sometimes I feel as though I'm skating on thin ice. And I think the town of Conway deserves more stability in knowing that there's somebody who is tasked very specifically with staying on top of all of the laws that come along, which change annually, and we are responsible for, for doing that. That is, unfortunately, uh, usually a relatively small part of my job because we have great employees who don't get us into trouble. Uh, that's not, um, you know, I think we've been very, very lucky. Um, well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Tom. Your answer is this is where I, I strongly recommend that o over the next, this year, uh, prior to annual town meeting, that the current select board take a strong look at how the departments run before they negotiate an, another contract with you. They look at how the department is broken up, what, who does what duty, and we address it at the annual town meeting so we can look at all the budgets and address it then, not throwing a Band-Aid on it uh, at this time of year. Thank you. The, uh, one of the questions put forth by Finance Committee to our town administrator when we on December 5th uh, met to vote on this particular article was how are we, and, and compared to other peer towns in Franklin County with regard to competitive salary range? And I was told that the Franklin Regional Council of Governments within the next two weeks of this uh, special town meeting will have a competitive salary guide that would perhaps offer us some guidance. Any other discussion? Article 8. Yes, Bob Baker. It almost sounds that it almost sounds to me like approval from this month is we're going to be hiring a, a, a director of, of human relations or human resources. You say you don't want no the private. You want the other person to take over and investigate it so we get, don't get into lawsuits. To me, that's putting a handle on a different position that's strictly to deal with human resources. And I think we should be cautious about that. Uh, if I can Sue Bridge. Well, this is just a citizen's uh, opinion. I'm, I'm not an expert on any of the subjects that surround this issue, but I would just say, well, it was interesting to me that under this town administrator, um, the budget has doubled. Uh, I have to say, from my point of view, the efficiency and importance of the office has gone up 10 times, and I'm really uh, grateful for the changes that have been made under Tom Hutchison. Tom? Uh, yes. Um, I would love if this town could support a director of human resources as a standalone position, but there's no way that's ever going to happen. Um, uh, both my assistant and I have multiple duties and uh, we do try to do our best to, to balance them. Uh, this is just one that worries me in particular. Helen Baker. Helen Baker, I think at this time this article should be tabled until other things are looked into closer. Is that a motion? Yes. There's a motion and a second. To table this article. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Article 8 has been tabled. Article 9. I move that the town transfer $1,500 from free cash to the general fund 
for additional administrative assistance services for boards, committees, and commissions. So this was submitted by the town administrator and it was recommended by the select board two to one. Finance committee? Finance committee voted four O in favor as presented. Explanation. Bob, do you wanna do you wanna want to take it? Do you want to talk it? Okay. Well, so this is gonna fund a very small number of hours by a person that's currently who works for a number of our town boards really well. Uh, writing up, uh, you know, uh, publishing the agenda and then writing up the minutes of the meeting and making sure that they get into the town clerk on time. And, and, and the reason this is important is that this is an example of the kind of things where Conway could get in real serious trouble. Uh, that, you know, there's a lot of state laws about how when you have to post uh, the agendas and how soon you have to submit the minutes. And we have a lot of wonderful volunteers who run our, run our committees, and, and I can look to myself as an example. And it is real easy that in the rush of everything else that we're doing, we just don't get that agenda posted in time, or we don't get those minutes published in time. And so there are, there's, a, there's a, a woman who does the minutes, just as an example, she comes and she takes the minutes for the Conservation Commission. I, and I can tell you it's a godsend, and I'm not, and, and when, when we try to find people that want to join these committees or want to chair these committees, it is a real break to tell them, don't worry, uh, you won't have to publish the agenda and you won't have to take the minutes in the meeting and get them out. Uh, it's, I think it's money well spent and it's not very much money. Bob Baker. If I remember correctly, at last annual town meeting, we had an appropriation line item for that position. What happens if we ran out of money? Wasn't enough money? What happened? Uh, there are a couple of committees that are, have seen how well this works for the Conservation Commission and for the Planning Board, and they have submitted an, a request to Tom if could, could somebody spend a couple of hours a month for their committee also. That's all we're talking about. Dana? Dana? Dana Goodfield, uh, Bardwell Ferry Road. Phil, could you explain to us why you oppose this? And thank you, Bob, for bringing that up, because I was going to bring it up. I think we uh, voted for a sum of money, and quite honestly, it concerns me a little bit with all the planning we're supposedly doing how in such a short period of time we could be so far off that we need to come back and get more money than we approved at the last town meeting. So um, I'll respond to that. The, the, uh, the, basically, the, the only, the only um, information that came up about this to the select board was, was through the, the, the town administrator and there was not a coherent response to which committees wanted this, how many hours they wanted. And so I didn't, I didn't really understand quite what I was voting for. The previous thing, the, the previous appropriation in the summer w um, was principally intended for the planning board and for the, uh, uh, what's yours? Uh, yeah, 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 the Conservation, Conservation Commission. Commission. And, and those are the ones that um, people can get really agitated with some of their decisions and there's potential for litigation. I am not so, uh, so inclined to say grant to the historical commission uh, a, a, a minutes writer. And so I don't, I don't know who's putting these types of things in. Um, but, but when you saw in, in the department budget um, that what, the planning board, I think, was $2,000 for, for this person to, to do minutes. Um, and I, I may give or take a few, um, and I, I, assume, so I, I assume those two committees uh, chewed up most of those hours. And, and you know, I, I'm also concerned about the over-reliance on that. Posting an agenda isn't that hard, guys. Um, it doesn't take that much time. And, and, you know, as someone who's been on your school committee for nine years, it's actually a state law that the secretary of your school committee um, has to take minutes. And I mean, I granted every year there is, uh, the, um, the, you know, nobody wants to do it, and uh, we but we switch off, and it's not that horrible, um, 
and you know, so, so you know, unless unless somebody can say what the committee is that needs this, how many hours they need, I, I'm I'm not inclined to, to to vote for it. And then you know, we can all be the evaluate whether that committee is an appropriate one to have a funded uh, administrative assistant. And um, or so, Tom. <laughs> Uh, specifically, the, the committee that asked me was the Cable Advisory Committee, which uh, Select Board Member Bob Armstrong chairs. I think he may feel a slight conflict of interest here. Um, uh, and and this, this would fund uh, 75 hours of, uh, roughly 75 hours of work uh, over the course of a year. Uh, this is not uh, an overspending of what was granted before. This would be this would be new and additional spending to allow new and additional service. We, we, we're, we're working fine with the uh, Conservation Commission and Planning Board with the money that was voted at town meeting. Mary. Speaking as a member of the planning board, my understanding, uh, well, first of all, I can say that it is really, really helpful to have um, the administrative assistant work for the planning board, and I assume also, and I've seen the work for the Conservation Commission. The thing that's different about the planning board and the Conservation Commission from many of the committees, it's, is, this is way beyond minutes and agendas. This is about, like, we're about to have a public hearing next Tuesday for anybody who's interested in whether or not marijuana is going to be grown on Roaring Brook Ro Road. That has to be publicly um, notified. There has to be legal notices. There have to be mailings to abutters. There's the, both the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board deal with permitting that requires a bunch of administrative work that's way beyond going and sticking an agenda on the wall at the town office building or writing up some minutes and getting them in. And that's why we have these. And, and, that is, and it has made a big difference because as volunteers, it's a lot of work. If we, you know, we've had volunteers in the past that had to go through the abutters list and make sure they all got mailed notices and that the notice went in on the right day to the newspaper, et cetera. So, that's, so I think the issue of so I think it's fabulous for those committees. The issue of whether somebody, you know, another committee needs minutes and agendas done, you know, I don't know. But I, my understanding of the reason that we had specifically this, the, the planning board and the conservation commission was because of our permitting roles in town. Dave. Dave Barton again, um, as a person who has written many, many minutes for three or four different committees over the many years I've tried to serve the town, uh, the problem of writing minutes has become complicated. This minutes are the very basis for legal action against the town or committee. They are the record of <clears throat> what has happened in a meeting, which is supposed to be an open meeting, and in most cases, open meetings don't have people who come attend from the public. So the record of that meeting is the minutes. That has to be filed with the town clerk. It is subject, though, to legal review should there be a suit against the town. And as a person who has taken a lot of minutes and seen the complication that has now entered into the governing of the town by the state in this case, uh, the writing of minutes for the person who writes those minutes is in a very strange position because in a certain sense he's writing what he hears but he can't participate fully in thinking through what is being said. So you're caught as a minute taker in this strange position of being half a committee matter and half not. And I would say anything that supports, and you have to add the ZBA into one of the committees that is a permitting committee, that anything that would enhance the possibility of each committee, and you could add others, who need legal, how would I say, their proof that what took place in the meeting in fact took place. 
This is legally a critical matter. Mr. Moderator. Todd? Uh, I'll add to that that it is significant that it is the Cable Advisory Committee that's asking for this. They're in the process of negotiating a new 10-year contract with Comcast for services. And uh, right now, Bob is the one who's taking the minutes. He's also chairing the committee. And uh, I think it would, it would help if uh, the members of, of that committee uh, were able to focus on the business at hand and had someone who we know uh, very well through uh, her work with the Planning Board and Conservation Commission, uh, Commission is uh, more than capable of taking minutes that would withstand legal scrutiny. Helen, last word. We have a tabling motion and a second. On, our, on article number nine. So we're going to vote on the tabling motion. All in favor? Tabling article nine. Opposed? No. no. So let's vote. Get out your cards. <laughs> Jim's going to count. There he is. He knows how to count. I can vouch for that. He knows how to count. <laughs> okay. If you are in favor of tabling Article 9, get your cards up. Hold them up, please. Put your cards down. If you're opposed, hold your cards up. Keep them up. If you're being loud, you're being loud. The motion to table passes 43 to 41. Vote's over. That's it. No, that's going to that's going to stand. That vote is going to stand. Article 10. I move that the town transfer $50,000 from free cash to the general fund to provide a 40% match for a state grant to construct a lift for the town hall. So that was submitted by the town administrator and it was recommended by the select board two to one. 
Finance Committee. Finance Committee voted 4 0 in favor as presented. Explanation. The state has not yet announced the recipients of the grant proposals submitted in early October, including Conway's, but we expect to hear this month. If Conway's project is not funded, this authorization can be rescinded at the annual town meeting. There has been some talk about a master plan for the town hall, which I agree is desirable. I will note here, though, that any plan for renovating the town hall will have to include a provision like this for accessibility. Discussion? Tom Pleasant. Thank you. <clears throat> we heard years past about wanting to move the town offices onto the second floor. Is that still a plan? <laughs> As I said, there's been some talk about a master plan for Town Hall, which I think is very desirable. Any such plan will have to include some provision like this for accessibility. Okay, my, my concern is losing the general purpose meeting room in its present condition. Uh, the seniors use it. Uh, there's a, mo a Sunday morning wellness meeting. Uh, they use it for caucuses. Uh, I know if you move upstairs, we'll lose the, the rag shag. Um, you know we can deal with that but I'm, I'm real concerned about the general purpose meeting room so I, I would like to amend the article as written to include um, stay, keeping the meeting room and I have some language I'd like to add on to that um, so I'd like to make a motion th that after the word there too in the article we would insert providing that any construction within the town hall shall support the continuance of the first floor general purpose meeting room and kitchen of comparable square footage and totality as of this vote. Okay, we have a motion to amend the wording Tommy just put forward to the end of this article. Does anybody want to hear that verbiage again? Yeah. Providing that any construction within the town hall shall support the continuance of a first floor general purpose meeting room and kitchen of comparable square footage in totality as of this vote. Do we have a second on that? Yeah. Okay. So what I meant by totality is that if the alterations, you had to do something with a smaller kitchen, but uh, you wouldn't lose the, the common ground. So if you had a smaller kitchen, you'd increase the size of the general purpose meeting room. You know, I know that if they're going to put a lift or an elevator in there, some, there's going to be some change to the existing body of the first floor, but my real concern is, is that the seniors, until we have a senior center, have a place to go. Now, this vote can be changed year, you know, in, in uh, May. Um, I just don't want to. I want to make sure we have it as as a vote that we're not going to lose the room, so we don't lose a spot for our seniors. Mary McClintock. Um, Tom, is it crucial? It, I I really agree with a meeting space and a kitchen in that in the town hall is it crucial that it be those that room or could there be a meeting room on the second floor that would serve that function yeah i <clears throat> my, my feeling is that it's a ground floor it's easy to get in easy easy to get out um no elevator for somebody to have to roll a wheelchair in and, you know it'd be great to have access to the second floor with a lift um for offices and whatnot but i i think with the amount of people that are going in there, uh, make it easy as possible for our seniors. Kenny Womat. Tom, you can just clarify if I'm right on this. The proposed area for this lift 
would have nothing to do with the GP room at all. It would be basically taking up a portion of the what is currently the ladies room and it would go up into the currently the men's room which was an old shower that hasn't been used in my lifetime. Um, is that correct, Tom? This project is on the other side of the town hall uh, from those rooms. I, I would hope that there would be no interruption in service during any construction. Of course, this means we'd, we we still have to get the grant and all of that. So and but, that's fine. But yeah, it would it would be on the other. That's why I wrote this side. the way I did. So if you had to move the general purpose meeting room to the left to accommodate, so that's fine as long as you don't lose the score footage and it remains on the first floor. Yes, yeah, there again there is. The, the current plan is on the other side of the town hall from the meeting room in the kitchen. Uh, Peter Jeswald, Old Cricket Hill Road. So several years ago, I went down and I measured the town hall, and I did a set of plans for offices on the second floor, and where Tom is talking about putting the, the elevator, the lift, you, you don't lose any space that's currently used. It's, it's in the hallway outside to the left as you go in. It tucks in there very nicely, and it works well for making the second floor accessible, which I think it's high time we did that. So. Would there be a way for this, the elevator to be efficient and comfortable and safe for our seniors to get up to the second floor, if that's what we're putting in there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Malcolm Kors first, then Bob Baker. I have a question about your elevator. I think it's a great thing, but has anybody investigated into how much it's going to cost to maintain that elevator? Inspections and all. You might want to talk to somebody from the library that could enlighten you a little bit on the, the cost of the upkeep. Uh, if I can respond to that. Yep. Uh, one of the reasons that we're considering a lift and not an elevator is because elevators are expensive to maintain, much more so than lifts. So, and, and no, I don't have an, uh, a figure for annual maintenance for a lift. Bob, then Chris Rose. My question goes along with Malcolm's also. What's the weight, maximum weight, that this lift is going to be able to lift? I'm looking at some people getting confused and they think that three or four people can get in this thing and ride to the second floor. And I got a sneaky suspicion that's not what's going to take place. Uh, no, this, this would be, uh, again, also smaller than an elevator. So I would, I would think that uh, it's probably two people at a time. Chris Rose. Uh, yeah, Chris Rose, uh, Waitley Road. Um, I happen to have had a little elevator experience. I want to know what's the square footage and what we're buying. Is it a lift? Is it an elevator? Uh, another question to the town manager. Uh, these things require licensed inspections that are done annually. You're not exempt having a lift from having an annual inspection, which costs $2,000 and up per year. Plus, it is mandatory to have service on this elevator, which you have to hire an elevator company to do. They're not cheap. Um, so I think our figures are all over the place here. You have to come back with a plan, a real plan, not just it's going to take two people or three. It requires fire service. It requires the whole building modification. Uh, that's just my input. Yes, we have a design done. This is the cost of construction, not maintenance. It's true. Uh, and it is a lift and not an elevator. It does require inspection. Uh, I would bow to your experience and say I assume it does. It certainly does. Right. 
Any other discussion on the proposed amendment? So, um, to Article 10. Yeah, um, I, a couple of different reasons. For, first of all, I thought, like, like uh, Chris Rose just said, uh, that there's elements to this proposal that seem to me to be a little bit fast backwards. That you, you don't, you know, the, 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 all, all of these things, what, what's the annual carrying cost? These things should be brought forward. They should be known. They should be, you know, you, when, how much the inspection, how much of the increase to the insurance, how much is the maintenance contract? Um, uh, and all that, I, th that should be known, it should be discussed, it should be agreed upon, and that, because this is the cost of this item. Um, and, uh, and it's not just that, you know, it, the, the, we're talking about rehabbing the second floor and making offices. Those costs have to be estimated, they have to be, they are knowable. It's not, not that much, how much, you know, the, all of these things. What are we buying with the elevator? What's the purpose of putting a lift up if, if, if we're not doing any of that, if it's just a few file cabinets in the rag and shag parade, it doesn't make any sense. So we're going to be doing all this stuff. What's it cost? And the, 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 the idea that, uh, you know, we'll figure it out downstream just isn't, it, it's not good enough. Uh, um, so that's why, yeah. Uh, um, the, the, the other thing is that, um, you know, we, you don't have to, if we're going to do this, you want to do this when you need it. And it, Right now, we are we're con you know we're contemplating this big uh, highway pr highway facility project. What is the appetite for this town to incur more expenses to spend on the buildings? Um, what, what's the appetite to spend on, on employees' workplace? Um, you know, gr granted, it's not ideal right now, and they deserve better. Um, but but you know th what th th this stuff is knowable. And we deserve these types of answers. Uh, uh, and you know, unless you insist on, on getting them before handing over the money, you'll, you'll never get answers to, to these types of things. So. Dana. I think we've got a lot of good input on this thing. And based on the input, we don't have the information we should have. Let's table this one, too. I make a motion to table it. Yes, ma'am. Peggy Kennedy, Husick Road. I just am wondering whether or not, if this is tabled or voted down now, whether we lose the chance at getting uh, the matching funds or whatever, the grant from the state. And that won't be too late. That's correct. We're sure of that. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. the town offices are not accessible on the second floor. Agreed. Um, you can't do anything to either of those buildings without making them accessible. Agreed. So. Okay, we're going to act on the tabling motion and second first. All in favor of tabling? Aye. Opposed? Tabling passes. <laughs> Article 11. I move that the town transfer $4,000 from free cash to the general fund for legal assistance in negotiating a long-term contract with Comcast for the provision of cable services. So this was, thank, this was submitted by the Cable Advisory Committee and it was recommended by the Select Board three to nothing. Finance Committee. Finance Committee vote of 4-0 in favor as presented. So I can speak to this. It's basically the attorney's fee that's been working with us as we renegotiate our 10-year franchise agreement with Comcast. Uh, we're using the same attorney we used 10 years ago. Uh, it's the same attorney that did Deerfield Waitley in Sunderland's. He's, in our opinion, the best attorney in the state for doing this. And we asked him about what he would want to do this. And uh, I think we're getting a real steal in having him 
you know, do a lot of work for us, and uh, he wants 4000 bucks. So I hope you don't table this. <laughs> do I hear a second on Article 11? Second. Jim? Uh, Jim Bosman, Academy Hill Road. Uh, we do have a legal um, account that we are we we voted money in that every year. It's in Article Two, I think, at the annual town meeting. It's maybe like I don't know, it's ten thousand, ten to fifty. What is it? It's, I think it's ten thousand. Ten thousand is that? Um, do you guys don't think that's going to be enough to cover this? Is that the situation? I don't know. Uh, no, that's that's what we might spend on on our usual legal fees. This is a one-time. Uh, expense for this negotiation. Any other discussion? Bob Baker. What's your legal fees? Tell right now. I don't have one. I don't have that figure with me. Sorry. Any other discussion? Let's vote. Yeah. All in favor of Article 11? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move. Article 12. I move that the town transfer 25000 from free cash to the general fund for title examinations surveys and related work for one or more mass dot bridge replacement projects on the North Poland Road. Second. So this was submitted by the town administrator and recommended three to nothing by the select board. Finance committee. Finance committee voting unanimously 4-0 in favor as presented. Tom? At the annual town meeting of May 2018, the town approved borrowing funds for repairing a bridge on North Poland Road. That was to borrow $330,000. Since then, the state has agreed to replace the bridge and possibly another bridge a short distance away, right next to 116 perhaps as early as fiscal year 2023. Although the replacement would be paid for by the state, there are costs for preparing the project that must be borne by the town, including title examinations, sometimes going back to the beginnings of the town, surveys, and related legal work. This amount is a conservative, meaning expensive, estimate of the funds necessary for the towns to do its part in preparing for those projects. Discussion? Tommy? So <clears throat> if I understand right, the, the 330000 that we already approved at an earlier town meeting we don't we won't spend we hope that the state follows through and does replace the bridges i would prefer to retain the authorization for that borrowing until the state has in fact replaced the bridges and that article is written so that we cannot take the 25,000 out of that 330 we would have to borrow that money okay all right so that 330 has not been set aside, so to speak. No. Just the authorization to Town meeting has simply authorized okay. it. We haven't borrowed. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Let's vote. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. All right. Article 13. I move that the town transfer $1,374.38 from free cash to the general fund 
to pay two bills from fiscal year 2019 as printed in Article 13 of the warrant. So if you look at Article 13, you'll see the details about the bills. It was submitted by the town administrator. The select board recommended it three to nothing. Finance Committee? Four row in favor as presented. 1374. A short explanation. Explanation. When the town does not pay its bills by the end of the fiscal year, they need to be approved by town meeting. We try to anticipate them all, but sometimes a few get missed, like these. Any discussion? I saw that, Ronnie. I like it. <laughs> This requires a nine-tenths vote, so help me out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Article 13, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I love you guys. <laughs> yeah. That was momentary. Article 14. Article 14. So this is what we're all here for. And this is going to be the longest run on one sentence that you have ever heard. And by the time I get to the end of it, I hope you can remember what the beginning of the sentence was like. I move that the town appropriate $988,000 for a new highway department maintenance facility. And to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7.1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore provided, however, that any bonds issued pursuant to this vote shall mature in not more than 20 years from their date of issue, excluding the terms of any notes that may be issued in anticipation of the issuance of any such bonds, such borrowing to be contingent on the passage of a Proposition 2.5 debt exclusion ballot question. So it's seconded. So this was submitted by the Highway Facility Committee, and the Select Board approved it three to nothing. Finance Committee. Finance Committee approved it four. And we broke it up in two sections. First, there's two critical elements here: the uh, free cash, which is to stabilize the tax rate burden increase. We voted four unanimous, unanimously in favor. And then B, regarding the uh, debt exclusion to borrow up to nine hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. B two. Voted unanimously in, unanimously in favor. But the, that free cash one is the next article. Yeah. Yeah. So we remixed them in because really one is with the other. The way, I mean, maybe the town treasurer can speak more to this, but uh, the way we borrow money in the town, which is regulated by the state, you know, it has to, there's certain ways to structure things. That's why we, that's why we discussed it in these terms. Anybody like to explain this a little better? Walter will, right there. Hi again. <laughs> uh, Walter Goodridge, um, Highway Facility Committee. Um, and I think all the members are here tonight. We've had a, a good year. In fact, we've had a great year. Um, uh, first, let me just thank for all of you, um, Ron Sweet, Ken Wamet, Peter Jeswold, Liv Wyatt, Hank Horseman. Uh, we, uh, we've had a great committee, and we've had great luck. <laughs> I hope some of you have seen how far along the storage building is coming. Uh, the roof is uh, being framed. It will be finished quite soon. Um, so on the handout, I, or we started that 
explaining why we're here tonight because it is obviously not a ton of fun for all of you um, to have to come to two meetings in a year. But this was part of our plan. Uh, we were able to get the other building started and the design was simpler. It got done soon. And we wanted to do that for many reasons. One of the biggest was that Ron and the highway crew could do the excavating last summer and get the site ready just as construction started. And it all fell into place beautifully. Uh, another very good piece of luck we had was the contractor that won the bid, Kurtz Construction. They were so helpful in the design of the building. And it was really nice that they did, were low bidder. And they weren't low bidder by much. They got the low bid by 900 bucks. Mm -hmm. But they have been great to work with. We have had no change orders yet, although they have been able to change stuff for us. We upgraded the garage doors. We've done various other things. And they've been so cooperative. And the quality's good. And so um, we're real pleased there. And we're hoping that they'll win the bid for the maintenance building. And the maintenance building is now, has been designed. You've got some sketches there. You get a rough idea of what we're talking about. And as the flyer says, it's, it's truly a no frills building. Um, but we haven't scrimped on quality, at least not to any significant degree. Um, we are confident that this is a good building. We were very lucky to get Dave Reland. Uh, he's in Shelburne, uh, in uh, Leiden. Um, he's uh, a registered engineer. And we were also extremely lucky to, through him, hire a value engineer. Uh, we've hired WV Engineering in Keene. And they specialize in the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing parts of the design. And they have taken out of the building many things that were back, were, were part of the 2014 design, upon which both buildings are, are based. And uh, we're getting a much simpler ventilation system simplified electrical system and we have more than saved the money that the value engineering company uh, is charging us. Um, the building itself is going to have similar construction to the one you see going up laminated wood frame, wood truss roof, coated steel roof and siding, a slab, but this slab will be different in that it will be insulated. There will be a full foundation wall around the building. And the uh, code requirements mean we have to put a lot more in this building. There are fire regulations. We have to have a uh, a fire alarm system. We have to have a um, two-hour fire rated wall between the workspace and the office space. The bathrooms are required. ADA compliance is required. And I'm sure the committee interrupt me with other mm -hmm. thoughts if you... Yeah, that's, it's stuff we kind of have to do. Um, so our schedule would be hopefully to authorize these articles tonight. Uh, the drawings, uh, we, we met today with, with uh, both engineers, and they feel that they can wrap up their final work with specifications probably by next week. So we're hoping that we can then have the bid documents made for us um, 
end of this month and into January, and then hopefully in January, uh, this can go out to bid. Preparation of the documents is a big deal, and we're hoping for uh, an, as good a job as we got on the storage building from Andrea Woods at the FERCOG, Franklin County Regional Council of Governments. Um, she did a great job, and it's also uh, a good time to mention other people who've really helped us. In addition to Andrea, Tom Hutchison is a big help, and the select board has been behind us all the way. And I think that um, it has really helped the functioning of the committee and uh, the results that, that we've been able to get. Um, so it'll go out to bid, and I think that process takes about six weeks. And then in the spring, hopefully, we'll award the contract. And as with the storage building, the town will be able to do the site work. It was really nice to spread this out into two separate buildings because we get two separate seasons when Ron Sweet and his guys can do the work as they did on the storage building for very much less money than, than would have had, been, had it been done by a general contractor. Um, I think that's pretty much what I got here. Uh, so, I or any of the committee members will answer questions. Malcolm Kors. Malcolm. He's got a loud enough voice. You don't need that. <laughs> Hold the microphone up. <laughs> what is the life expectancy of the uh, shed that you're building now? Well, <laughs> we read that it's 40 or 50 on the air. Yeah, just I think I'm not. Uh, oh, you're there. I'm here. Um, the one we're doing, both buildings uh, are supposed to be good for 50 years minimum. Uh, we have. 25-year warranty on all the coated metal panels. Um, but as you know, there are steel buildings that are pushing 100 years. I think that the major factor that would impinge upon the longevity of the building would be adverse weather or adverse driving. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I know, I know it was cost prohibitive probably, but I understand on your new building, the other building, you're going to build a, a wall to set the sills on, not on the ground like you have this one out here. Right, right. That don't make sense to me in this, in this country. You know? <laughs> yeah. Malcolm and I had a conversation about the present storage building, and we both agreed with his suggestion that we have a knee wall a masonry or poured concrete knee wall all around the building to protect from those driving problems. And he's absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, it would be better. Of course, we had no idea when we designed that building uh, how much the town would really be behind this project. And so rather than pour those walls, we thought this was a sensible compromise. And I still think it probably was because uh, should some of that wall get damaged, its repair will probably cost a whole lot less than, than, than that concrete knee wall. In addition, we have made uh, a nod to that potential problem by having the steel siding in two pl pieces. We have the lower part of the walls uh, called a wainscot. It's the same material, but it's a separate panel. So we will, with the building, get some of those panels that are this high, if they get dented or damaged, they can be easily replaced without having to replace a wall panel that goes all the way up to the roof. 
And so I think that's going to be a real economical way to extend the life of this building in both buildings and keep them good looking. But the other building, you're going to have a, you're going to have a wall to set your sill on, right? Well, that's in, we're going to have a, a full foundation wall. Peter, is that wall extending three feet above the slab? I'm not sure that it is. Yeah. No. When we were looking at the original building and, and planning to have a three foot high knee wall in it, the cost of concrete is just amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it, it was exorbitant. Does anybody from the committee remember what, what, what the figures were? But we were just aghast at how, how expensive yeah. and how much money we saved by eliminating that knee, that knee wall. Because as the knee wall came up and they had fill in the back, it was yeah. just, uh, just... They say, you know, either pay me now or pay me later. And I can't believe it, but it's going to be something going on there down the road that we aren't going <coughs> to like. But without getting any personalities involved, I'll be quiet. <laughs> okay. Dave Maslake, I've been in the construction business for 45 years. The prices I see are outrageous, okay? To pour the slab, they want 100 grand, right? And the size of that building, right? It's 88, 89 yards max, okay? At $250 a yard, right? Wrong. That's, what? Wrong. The concrete itself is $250 a yard. No, to I'm place the labor and the, I poured concrete for 35 years. But 35, we, how, how many years do you have? <laughs> none, I guarantee it. No, you're wrong about none. However, you, you, you have Would a whole lot more than I Step that home? Here's the deal. We have to pay prevailing wage. We don't, the contractor does. Um, the contractor figures Six hundred and fifty to seven hundred dollars a yard placed, done under the Massachusetts. Are you kidding me? No, no it's ridiculous. I worked for for the DOT. I worked on bridges. Yeah, sure. I bid contracts for the Mass DOT. I worked on seventeen bridges in this state. All right. All right. Coolidge Bridge. Out in uh, Chester. Wind. Uh, Mass Pike, we did seven bridges on the Mass Pike. And the seven hundred and fifty dollars a yard, are you crazy? I They're think bullshitting you. I'll tell you that right now. No, no. I th I think and to put a barrier around it, you can put jersey barriers if you need to, if you're worried about everybody running into the building. So that for a hundred thousand dollars, I'll tell you what, I'll get my contractor's license back because I I retired it, okay? I'll pour that 100, that 88 yards, and I'll have enough to finish the house that I, that burnt on me. Well, you, you guys are smoking these people. You know, or somebody's smoking you, but you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well. And that's a fact. That's your fact. We. No, that's, that's actual fact. No, it's his, he's got the floor. When, when he's, he's well, I'll wait, I'll wait. Tell me when you're done. I'm done. He's done, okay. <laughs> we put this building out to bid, the, the um, storage building that's under construction now. The low bid, obviously, was the one we took. There was a bid almost double that. We had five bidders. All of them wanted the job. All of them put a lot of work into it. Part of the reason we got good building prices is that Dave Reeland had the good sense to design these buildings with a sort of generic description. So we could get bids from metal building people, wood building people, uh, various types of construction. So if we got the lowest bid, 
I don't think there's any craziness or seriousness here. Somebody, if they could have, would have come along way down below this. Prevailing wage is an amazingly difficult problem. Yeah, and a laborer under prevailing wage for a lot of jobs is $50 an hour. Um, it doesn't take long to explain these really high prices. Have you been in it? And <laughs> have you paid the payroll? You have. Are you aware of the payroll? Are you aware? And you think you can pour concrete for the raw price that the truck dumps it on the ground, which is two hundred and fifty dollars? You mean to tell me? It varies, but it can approach that, yes. And that doesn't count. Pounds, PSI, state mix, which is the highest price there is, is not that. I don't need it. I don't care. Well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, Walter. Uh, I've, I've got one question with uh, your design here, and uh, you guys have worked hard at this, and you've got a pretty, uh, pretty good design. The only thing I'm not seeing, and I hope is included in your total price and your wish list, is where's the septic leach field? Where's the water well? Where's all of that? Oh, they we are. We don't want any other mysteries with projects. You know, we don't seem to have the whole package together when we plan. So, yeah. Because you just have the elevation in the floor plan, you don't see the site plan, which does include septic, propane tanks, air oil separator, tight tank, water line from the well, electric line to the well, electric line to the transformer, electric line from this building to the storage building, from this building to the salt shed. That's all stuff in site work, which... So the water, the water well is in place and the septic it's an existing is well. in place. That's right. The septic is not in the place, but it's part oh, of... Oh, to be built, but it's included. It's in the specifications and in the final drawings. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. It looks like you're going to be asking for roughly 1.3 million in change to put this new building up. A little more than that, yeah. A little more than that. Um, <clears throat> when we talked about putting that building up a few years ago, we were talking about three, four million dollars. A little less. So what you people have done at this point is set the town roughly an estimated two million dollars, and I think that's a fantastic feat you've pulled off. And I, it's getting late in the evening. It's getting late in the evening. I think you people have done a wonderful job, and I think it's about time we passed and started building this brand new highway garage. Thank you. I'm uh, Ken Pleasant, Fournier Road. You said the well is existing. <clears throat> Ken Pleasant, Fournier Road. You said the well that it will be put into use for this project is existing. Could right. you be some more specific as to where that well is? Yeah, it's over um, closer to the school. It's uh, where the containers are parked, those, those two beige containers. It's uphill from that. Okay, so any well that is for public usage is not allowed to be within 196 feet of another building. Um, so the salt shed 
that well, currently it, houses the salt and sand? Is that within 196 feet of this existing well? Well, this isn't a public water supply well. It, the school it is a public water supply well. Yes, but for public usage. So your bathrooms, your wash bays, the, the people that work for the town are the public, so they will be intended to use this water at this building. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think there's a very good chance it is 196 feet. Okay. Um, I measured the school one, and we're 230 feet. Um, so I think this one probably makes it. But we have been told by the engineer that this did not have to meet the same public water supply requirements, which are pretty stringent. Right. And they're involved with the Department of Public Utilities and the Department of Environmental Protection? They're not. They don't work for them. These are registered engineers. Okay. Uh, a, a fellow named Richard Parks. But I think that's very good you point that out, and we'll, ab we'll have to make absolutely certain of that. Okay. Okay, uh, first of all, before I talk on the town garage, I just want to thank Ron Sweet and his team. We had a three-day storm last week. Those guys did a fantastic job. So, round of applause. Um, and, and as I, I spoke at the meeting f when they uh, just put the money together for the storage building, you know, I'm being in the butter. I'm, I'm strongly support this. We, this town garage is long overdue. Just, you know, my concern is over over the tax impact. And, but, again, you, you guys have shaved this down. Um, you've done a good job with it. Again, I strongly support. I hope the town town voters push this through and continue work on this. Um, I got one dilemma, and I'm, I'm hoping that the committee and, and me, the Board of Selectmen, contemplate doing something with the driveway. Because right, right now, the only access to this building is, is across our driveway. So we own the driveway that feeds the salt, the salt shed that belongs to the Pleasant family. So the access to the new town shed, the salt shed, the new highway garage is right through our backyard. So that being said, I would love to see it moved, and I'll, I would like to entertain a meeting with the select board with my son and possibly work out some details as far as either buying it from us or, or relocating it one or the other. But it's... It's become a hardship for us to, to put up with the, the impact of the traffic at, during the building. And, and Ron's been great. This is not a shot at Ron because he's been great. My grandkids uh, love to see him. They call him Mr. Ron. So that's, that's been great. It's just long term, it's, it, it really, it's, it's not an ideal situation to be crossing somebody's yard to, to get to a, a town-owned building. So thank you very much. I hope you vote for this. Could I just say one thing? You reminded me that I skipped over something on my notes in which I just wanted to put in a little antidote about Ron, who had did all, and Ron and his crew, did all the site prep work for the storage building. And that storage building has a slab in there, a beautiful slab that came out wonderfully, but it has two drains in it. Uh, one in the center of each half of the building, and the concrete has to pitch four to six inches from the edge down to those drains. And in order for that to work, the subgrade, the stone, has to pitch like that too. And that, by any measure, is a real challenge. And Ron um, staked it out. He put in batter boards and the concrete crew could do nothing but compliment him on how well it was and, and how it made their job easy. Because an inch or two high in 50 feet would have been a big problem. So I think everybody can be very proud of the work that our town crew can do. Required. Oh, yeah, definitely.
time to the treasurer, Jan Warner, who would like to talk about the money end of this. I, I did promise you, that's true, Mary, I forgot. Go ahead. That's the well, yeah. It's near the driveway that goes up to the storage building. Right, right, the original well. The original well, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I would like to see what the requirements are, as this gentleman pointed out, around, um, because that's way closer than the well that's up by the ice pond. And so, what is the radius around that well? And that's again where I'm really sorry that we're voting for a million dollar um, loan without having a site plan. No, we d we don't we don't have one with us. Put on the right. I didn't want to interrupt the that conversation because I'm going to change the topic a little bit to the money end of it. So I'm Jan Warner, the town treasurer, and I also live on Waitley Road in Conway. And uh, if you if you pull out this little sheet that you got on your seat tonight. Um, we've drawn up something to try and uh, show you what the impact for your taxes will be. And um, so if you see um, right about in the middle of the page, there's a column that says annual debt service. This is the amount we have to pay if we go out and take a 15-year state house note. And you can see it starts out at 114990 and goes down to um, 67000 by the end of it. So you see, you know, big payment in the beginning and it gets smaller as time goes on. And the idea that actually Joe Strugowski is big on this idea, he kind of brought it forward and we ran with it. But the idea is to try and um, stabilize the, the impact to your taxes. So if we used some free cash, you'll see it in the column just next to that, for the first 10 years, we can keep the... Um, the, the, the payments, you know, your, um, your tax impact pretty stable through the 15 years. So that was the first point I wanted to make. Um, and the second point I wanted to make is about the debt exclusion part of it. Many people don't understand this. They see Prop 2 and a half and they get really scared. But what this actually does is um, our town has a levy limit and uh, so we can only increase that by two and a half percent each year without an override. So if our loan payment were to make us go over that limi levy limit, we would have to have a debt, ex um, sorry, we would have to have a prop two and a half override. So we're actually trying to protect the taxpayer and keep this uh, loan payment a temporary thing because it only allows your taxes to go up for that period of 15 years and then you can go back down. If you do a prop two and a half override, your levy limit is permanently increased. So that, that actually protects the taxpayer. Does anybody have any questions on that? I don't believe there is a prepayment option in this. Yeah. So what happens is we put, we put the loan out to bid and they attract, um, 
you know, banks to come and bid, and we've estimated very conservatively 4.5%. We expect we'll get lower than that. But then the banks turn around and sell those notes, and so they're planning their investment, so they don't allow you to prepay. So we're looking at the, the full term then? Yes. All right, so... But you can use more free cash towards the To the offset debt the tax payment. implication, right. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for your effort. Sure. Tom? Thank you very much. Uh, the chair of the select board, John O'Rourke, uh, as you heard earlier, was unable to be here. And this is the second part of the, uh, the message that, that uh, he wanted uh, read here uh, for him. This is a very important special town meeting. The main event is obviously the vote for the Highway Department Maintenance Facility tonight, followed by the ballot vote on Thursday, December 12th, for the debt exclusion to finance the maintenance facility. The Highways Facility com Committee, com composed of Ken Wimette, Peter Jeswald, Liv Wyatt, and Ron Sweet, under the leadership of Chair Walter Goodridge, has done an outstanding job delivering a well-thought-out, comprehensive plan for the Highway Department Storage Facility and the Highway Department Maintenance Facility at a significant cost savings over previous plans. Ron Sweet and the highway crew did much of the site preparation work for the Highway Department Storage Facility that contributed much to the cost savings of the project. You may have noticed the Highway Department Storage Facility being erected behind the Highway Department Salt Shed near the Conway Grammar School. It is on schedule and under budget. It is time to overwhelmingly support the, effects, uh, the efforts of the Highway Facilities Committee to bring this long overdue and much needed Highway Department maintenance facility to fruition. Please vote to pass the Highway Department Maintenance Facility article tonight and vote to pass the debt exclusion for financing the maintenance facility on Thursday. Thank you for being here tonight. Again, my apologies for not being here. Tommy Pleasant. I have one last question. I'm sorry to keep taking time, but I'm sitting next, next to Malcolm, and it ru it's been rubbing off. Um, <laughs> so what happens, if we vote it in tonight, what happens if it doesn't make it through the ballot box? What, what actually happens then? Then the... the, the Project does not go forward. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is possible that we could have a. No, the, 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 the election is the election. If it happened the other way, if, if we voted it down now and it passed at the ballot box, we could have another special town meeting. Uh, but with. Uh, and, and it's a majority vote. It's a two thirds vote tonight. It's a majority vote at the ballot box. Um, so if it does pass by two-thirds, uh, I would hope that it would pass at the ballot box by a majority. Uh, but without that, there's no authorization to, um, to borrow the money, and we would then be unable to go out to bid, uh, and it's conceivable we could bring it back at the annual town meeting. Six months later, prices change a little bit, um, we might have to have a, a revised estimate done, something like that, but um, we hope that it can pass both here and at the ballot box. Can I call the question? Yes. You can. That was going to happen. Okay, let's vote on this. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> think we really have to vote on moving the question at this point. Article 14. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That was two thirds. Right. That was unanimous. <laughs> um, Mr. Moderator, just a brief, a brief point of order on this. Uh, just, just so that you all know, the town of Conway has been trying to get a new highway facility passed at town meeting since. April 1974. <laughs> so that's 45 years. That it needed to marinate. It needed to marinate, but uh, 45 years. I was 12. There you go. You got one more. There. Yep. One more. Article 15. 
So this is just moving some free cash in to make the total amount we borrow a little less. I, I will. I move that the town transfer 50000 from free cash to the general fund and the remainder of the highway garage stabilization account, $243,251.51 to the general fund to partially fund a new highway department maintenance facility. We have a motion and a second. We don't need an explanation on this, do we? Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. I hear a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, that's it. So come and vote on Thursday. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs>